Today we're recognising how Jesus holds all things together even when everything seems to be falling apart. So let's get right to it here on Kamsa Connect. Welcome to Kamsa Connect, a worship service brought to you by the Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army family. Well, may that be the prayer of each one of us, that no matter our circumstances or feelings, we will fill the air with our praises, because we know who God is and what he has done for us. So thanks, Soxus, for that song, and what a great way to start our worship. Yep, absolutely. So as you can see, our theme for this week is holding together. And we'll be getting into what exactly that means in a few moments. But first though, let's join together in Isaac Watts' great hymn, which reminds us of the sovereignty of Jesus and how he is Lord over all. Jesus shall reign.
thank you for that great scene. Now, we've got a really great episode and time of worship coming up for you today. We've got another favourite song from one of our Kamsa family, an introduction to the Salvation Army's self-denial appeal, which supports the work of the movement overseas. And we're going to get down to some baking right here on Kamsa Connect. What about that? Yes, so don't forget to like the video and click subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with all our content. Now, with our theme holding together, we'll be looking at what the Bible says about the universe being created for Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ. That's right. Coming out of the season of Epiphany, we now turn towards Lent, which is just a couple of weeks away. Through the month of February, we're going to continue to focus on the person of Jesus, this week talking about his supremacy, and next week talking about his transfiguration. And then, as we get into Lent... Hey! We're going to look at Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, the calling of the first disciples, and the clearing of the temple. Those are well-known stories to some of you, but if you don't know what we're talking about, don't worry. All you need to know is these stories speak about Jesus' divinity and his humanity. He really is truly and properly God and truly and properly man. Yeah, I think we might need some scuba diving equipment because it sounds like we're going to be going in pretty deep. But it will be wonderful to remind ourselves who Jesus is as we head towards Lent and Easter. And by the way, what about that Colossians word? That's a pretty long word, isn't it? What are we going to do when we get to 1 Thessalonians? We have decreed that there will be no preaching from 1 Thessalonians because we can't fit it on the light box. Anyway, in case you're wondering, a Colossian refers to somebody who lived in the city of Colossae, the ruins of which are found in the modern day country of Turkey. So let's spend a few moments in prayer. And as we think about being held together by Jesus, in a few moments we'll sing the chorus Bind Us Together. First, though, to lead us in spoken prayer, here's Gary. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today grateful for your continued goodness to us. There is much that we would thank you for. Our health, our freedom to worship, our loved ones, our families. Many of these bring and keep us together. In these very uncertain times, there are many things that can set us apart from one another. There are many in our core family, our friends, neighbours, our country and the wider world who are worried about their health, be it physical or mental. The current pandemic does not permit us to be as close as we would want to be. We are grateful that new technologies can help us to try to come together in ways that we had not previously thought possible. At this time, we would pray for the leaders of our nations. They have the burden of decision-making that will have a profound impact on all our lives. As they make these decisions, we pray that you will guide their thinking and which ultimately will enable people to come and stay together when it is safe to do so. We would think particularly at this time of self-denial, the work of the Salvation Army in this country and worldwide. The challenges our organisation faces are unrelenting, ever-changing and ever more demanding. We thank you for our leaders and ask that you will continue to sustain and strengthen them for all these tasks. We give thanks for the work that they are currently doing here and worldwide in meeting existing and new challenges. We pray that with the financial support we are able to give, that your will can be done in a way that gives hope to those who need it. We greatly miss the opportunity to meet one with another and we look forward to the time when once again we can meet together in fellowship. We would pray also for the work that we do for our local community here in Cambridge, that we will continue to guide our thoughts and actions as we strive to enhance our service through our building plans and the work that this will support. We ask all of this in your name and that as we listen to your voice, that it will be your will that is done as we strive to bring people together. Amen.
Well, thanks for joining with us in prayer. And may we all sense that we are bound together in God's love at this time in our world. Well, coming up in a few moments, we have a story for the young people and the weekly update too. First, though, recently we announced that with your support through our It's Virtually Christmas online concert, we've been able to donate £1,300 to the fabulous Arthur Rank Hospice here in Cambridge. So this week, the event's organisers, Annie and Simon, were able to meet one of the Arthur Rank representatives online, of course, to hand over a cheque. This is what happened. In December, the Cambridge Salvation Army produced an online fundraising carol concert. It's virtually Christmas. Since its premiere, it's been viewed and shared far and wide and to date has received nearly 2,300 views on YouTube. During the concert, we encourage donations to our chosen charity, the Arthur Rank Hospice here in Cambridge. People gave so generously and willingly to such a great charity and we are pleased to be here today to present this cheque for £1,300 to Alison who represents the charity. On behalf of Arthur Rank Hospice Charity, thank you so much for this generous donation. In a year that's been incredibly difficult for fundraising efforts, any money that, that we receive is truly appreciated. Thank you so much again for your kind generosity. Yes, we really appreciate your response, everybody. Thanks for giving so generously. So the verse that we're looking at today is from Colossians chapter one. And it says that Jesus is the head of all things and in him, all things hold together. So the challenge is how to show that. Five minutes later. So I'm holding in my hands a whole load of Rice Krispies. Other breakfast cereals are available. So this could be an illustration of how Jesus is holding us, holding the whole universe all together. But I'm not sure it really gets across the full meaning of the verse. So let's try something else. 11 minutes later. So in this bowl, I've got some chocolate and I'm going to add in the Rice Krispies to the chocolate and some sultanas or raisins because who doesn't want that sort of thing in your Rice Krispies? So we'll just mix the chocolate round and we'll put those all in and we'll mix it together and we'll see what we get. Approximately 10 hours later. So we're just making sure that the chocolate covers all of the crispies. One eternity later. So now the chocolate's had a chance to cool, and what I've got is a rice crispy cake, which I'm sure you've seen before. So when we check it out, we can see that it's very different to the crispies that were loose in my hand before, because the chocolate has worked its way in intermingled with the crispies and the sultanas, and it's all become one thing. And I think this is a better illustration of that verse from Colossians because Jesus is not just holding us, he's in there with us. And so we're all linked together and linked to him and linked with wider creation. And Jesus is running through it all, he's in it all, and he's holding it all together. And so we with him are one. Thanks for that story, Karen. I can see now why you didn't want my cherry bakewell or my jaffa cake for your story. I suppose I'll just have to eat them instead. Good morning everyone. It's hard to believe that we have been sharing in worship like this for almost a year. Soon Easter will be with us once again. But in the Lent period we are hoping to commence a series of Lent reflections. These are currently being formulated our officers update number 48 has details of this and also plans for our forthcoming prayer weekend and holy week. 
as mentioned last week, the Salvation Army's annual self-denial appeal, which has the title Building Hope and Resilience, is being introduced today. And a video is to be shown later in this episode. Our self-denial altar service will be on March the 7th, and you can send your gift to Karen by cheque. By now, you will have received your army periodicals, including your free war cries, of course, and the prayer leaflets for February. As ever, you can pay for your periodicals and for your cartridges in the usual way to Karen. Finally, here is a reminder of our usual activities for the week, which are on this same video channel. And these are every Sunday at 9am kids time, which is a special presentation just for young people. And then on Wednesday at 7pm, prayer matters. This Wednesday, but not on this video channel, Cams and Connect Sings will continue at 8pm. This is where we enjoy sharing in singing and fellowship. Please contact Annie or Chloe for more details. Thanks very much for watching and for listening. It's now time to give to the Lord in our offering. Thanks for your giving today. Would you join us in a prayer of blessing as we thank the Lord for his goodness. Father God, we thank you for every good gift, for every blessing and for the greatest gift, your son Jesus. Please accept our gifts today. May you use our finances, time and talents so that others might know of you and your love for them. We give our grateful thanks to you this day. Amen. And amen. Well, as we've already mentioned, we're heading towards Lent and the time of year when many of us think about giving something up. Why do we give something up? Well, if you're a person of faith, it's usually to do with having more time and energy to focus on God. But Lent can also be a time for taking something up, like supporting a charity or giving your time to help others. That's why each year during Lent, the Salvation Army has its self-denial appeal, where all of us are encouraged to deny ourselves something, hence the title, and put the money we save into helping others. The self-denial appeal helps the work of the Salvation Army overseas, so during the next few weeks we'll be showing a video on a different part of the world where the army is at work. Shortly we'll dip into the New Testament for today's scripture reading and then hear about a favourite song. First though, the theme of this year's self-denial appeal is Rebuilding Hope and Resilience. So in the first of five weekly videos, let's see how the army is doing that around the world. Hello and welcome to the first of our films for this year's Self-Denial Appeal. My name is Ben Cottrell and as we live through the various lockdown measures in place across our territory, I'm going to be looking beyond our borders. For this year's Self-Denial Appeal, I'm going to focus on some of the places we've featured in previous appeals and catch up with people we've met along the way to find out how they've been coping during the pandemic. But first, let's look at last year's appeal. Last year, we travelled to the city of Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso. We met Andre and Nanatogo and saw some of the amazing things that they're doing there. 
We saw a thriving corps full of enthusiastic new soldiers and we saw how the Salvation Army is supporting people in the local community. You gave generously once again. Thank you so much. Your self-denial money is already being put to good use. And as a little reminder about how self-denial works, here's Ashley Bowles who presented our films a couple of years ago. The money you gave through self-denial is used to support the mission of the Salvation Army around the world, including our mission partners. The idea of self-denial was first introduced in London by William Booth in 1886. He said, go without something and give what you would have spent to the Salvation Army's work. That was over 130 years ago. Now, nearly every Salvation Army Corps the world over plays its part. So if you are giving in London, Clanethley, Larne or Lockerbie, you are joining with Salvationists in Oslo, Ohio or Ouagadougou, which is the capital city of Burkina Faso. The money is redistributed by international headquarters to the places that need it most. It funds the background things, the not so exciting but essential things, so that Salvation Army staff and volunteers can get on and do what they're good at like the work in Burkina Faso. Well, as Ashley has reminded us, some of the self-denial money you raised goes to our mission partners, but quite a lot goes to other mission support work all over the globe. Mission support was crucial in enabling the work in Burkina Faso as the seedling Salvation Army took root and began to flourish. For over a year, I've had the privilege of working for the International Development Team at Territorial Headquarters. It's given me a further insight into the international work of the Salvation Army, and I've been involved in some of the projects which have been funded by self-denial. I live here at William Booth College with my wife Rebecca and our two children. In a few weeks' time, we'll be moving to a court in East London. But this time last year, we were waiting for visas to go and work in Pakistan. Like so many other people around the world, our plans were disrupted by the global pandemic. Of course, lots of people have faced real hardship, and while it's been frustrating for us, we are well and healthy, so we are grateful for that. As we adjust to this change for us, and as we think about self-denial, I want to find out about how the Salvation Army around the world has adapted. So for the next five weeks, we'll be revisiting some of the places we've been to before. I'll be asking people how they're coping and what life is like where they are. I'll be talking to Fozia Columbus in Pakistan. She featured in 2016 when Kerry Koch visited the Salvation Army's territorial headquarters in Lahore. I'll be talking to Melinda Boone from the Philippines. Melinda features in the Salvation Army's Helping Hand Appeal films from last year. She works in anti-human trafficking. I'll be talking to Richard Bradbury. Richard and his wife Heidi have been serving in Bangladesh for the last two and a half years. They're there with their two children and work at headquarters in Dhaka, the country's capital. But next week, we'll pick up where we left off last year. I'll be talking to Nana Togo, who we saw in Burkina Faso. I'll look forward to seeing you then. firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Good morning. Singing is one of my chief delights, so it won't surprise you when I tell you that I have numerous songs and hymns that I can categorise as favourites. The one I have chosen for today is number 340 in our Salvation Army songbook. 
It is a paraphrase of a very old hymn sung for some thousand years in Latin. It starts with deep worship and then goes on to express longings for a deeper relationship with the Lord. I find that it lifts me during dark times, in times of isolation like this pandemic, and it is a favourite of mine to the tune of Heart and Lee by George Marshall. The first verse goes like this. Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts, thou fount of life, thou light of men, from the best bliss that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to thee again. Let's sing this together. If there is anything admirable, if there is anything worthy of praise in all the universe, it is summed up in Jesus Christ. He is always infinitely admirable in everything and over everything supreme. Over all galaxies and endless reaches of space, over the earth, from the top of Mount Everest, 29,000 feet up to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, 36,000 feet down in the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Rim. He is sovereign and supreme over all plants and animals, from the peaceful blue whale to the microscopic killer viruses. He is supreme over all weather and all movements of the earth, hurricanes, tornadoes, monsoons, earthquakes, avalanches. As Abraham Kuyper famously said, and many of you know, there is not one square inch on planet Earth over which the risen Christ does not say, mine, and I rule it. I am supreme over it. 
We must know this Christ. And though it may not seem to you as though he holds such supreme rule now, it is but a matter of very short time until he comes with the glory of his Father and all his angels in flaming fire, giving relief to those who trust him and absolutely destroying to the uttermost in everlasting conscious torment those who have rejected him, saying, Where is your God? Well, my Bible thought today is, well, what he said. Pastor John Piper is a theologian and founder and senior teacher of DesiringGod.org and, as you can tell from that video, a very gifted communicator too. Those two minutes of preaching and a bridged version of a sermon he gave at a conference in 2004 are linked to the transcript of the full talkers in the description below and set to those beautiful images and music by Mark and Emma Rooney that's also linked in the description below. They make for a very inspiring video. Well, as I prepared for today and in my research listened to that sermon, I realised that, well, sometimes you just have to let somebody else say it better. What I will do today, though, is just simply and quickly highlight two things from that message. Number one, first of all, John Piper said that there is not one square inch on planet Earth over which the risen Christ does not say, mine and I rule it, I am supreme over it. In our reading from Colossians chapter 1 in verse 16 we read, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And I think this is important for our world and for you and me too. It's important for our world because at this precise moment, um, so many people uh, feel that life has been pulled apart for them. John Piper mentioned killer viruses. In 2004, he was speaking, remember. And that has a really special significance in our world today, a world that's still wrestling to put to bed a virus which, in some shape or form, has touched almost every person on planet Earth. Jesus is supreme over this virus. Viruses do what viruses do, but they're not in control of the world. Jesus is. That means there will be a better day for our world. And it's important for you and me because the totality of Jesus' rule over the world, the every square inch, doesn't just refer to the world we walk upon. It includes us too. Our individual, personal situations, they're known to God and he rules over them too. He's in the specific detail of our finances, our friendships, our addictions, our employment situation, our marriage, our children and all those we love and care about. He is in it all. So he's in the world and he's in this worldwide situation holding everything together and he's in the detail of our lives too. That means we can trust the risen Jesus. We can lean on him. We can rely on him. We can count on him. He sees the future and we are in his hands. The second thing I wanted to highlight from uh, the message that we heard was his instruction, we must know this Christ. Why? Why must we know this Christ? Well, because simply this Christ wants to know you. That's why. Those verses from Colossians were most likely a song or a poem which Paul inserted to highlight for his readers just who Jesus is and why they should trust him. They are there to outline who Jesus is, but they also served as an encouragement for the early Christians to get to know this risen Jesus. And it's no different for us too in the year 2021. We too can read those verses to be inspired about how all things hold together in Christ even when it seems like they're falling apart. Yes, but best of all, to know that Jesus, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and the one through whom everything was made, wants to know you. Lord of all, 
when our lives fall apart, when our world divides us, when churches pull away from each other, hold us together in love. Lord Jesus, as we go out into the world, help us to remember that in you all things hold together. May we live lives that show that we put our full trust in you today and always. Amen. And amen. Well, thanks for joining us this week, everyone. We'll be back next Sunday where we'll be looking at the story of the transfiguration and asking how can we carry the image of God's glory in our hearts and minds? We'll also have a word of testimony, a visit from the skit guys and music from our amazing junior choir, The Singing Company. Ah, we love them. But anyway, before we go, please join us in a song that challenges us all to put our trust in Christ alone. So until next week, keep safe, keep well and keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you. safe keep well and keep connected god bless you <coughs> and chancellor of the bethlehem college and chancellor of the bethlehem college uh dis link there's a link to allison who represents the charity 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 <laughs> link to a transcript of the full talk in the description below blimey that's hard to say so now the chocolate's had a chance to set, and what we've got is a Rice Krispie cake. <laughs> and the one through everything, and the one through him. No, it doesn't make sense. Lord of Lords and the one through... We really, really... <laughs> Let's go again. 
uh, King of Kings, Lord and Lords, Lord of Lords, and the one through whom all things were made. <laughs> we're Close. all close now. <laughs> And I think, I don't think I need to do that because it looks, I think I just need to do that. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Start from the middle. Best of all, to know that Jesus, the King of Co Okay. Take three. What number do you think we'll get to? 17. <laughs> <laughs> this will be it. This will be it. This, this is it, isn't it? Yeah, come on. This is it. <laughs> Fill the air with our praises because we know who God is and what he has done for us. So thanks, songsters, for that song. With our prissier. <laughs> I, I thought I'd change that to say prissier. <laughs>